Welcome to Entrepreneurial Reality with Bash. Every week we'll be speaking to startup and scale-up founders to learn about them, their ambitions for the business, goals and objectives. Every conversation is a moment in time, documenting entrepreneurs' current situation with a view to coming back next year to see how they are getting on. Each journey will be different. Each innovation could be game-changing. I hope you enjoy. Series one, episode 28. I have with me Laura Williams, the founder of The Secret Inspirer. Welcome, Laura. Oh, well, thank you, Ben. Thanks for having me. Lovely to be here. You're welcome. For the benefit of the listeners, if you could tell us a little bit more about The Secret Inspirer. Yeah, so The Secret Inspirer is essentially me, and I am a life coach, um, and I also run wellness events, treats and things like that. So I focus on uh, the entertainment and wellness industry and really help people live their potential. It's essentially an inspirer to the inspirers of the world. That's kind of in a nutshell, what The Secret Inspirer is. Tell us a bit more about how you got here today. I mean, I've been in kind of corporate jobs and things like that for years and years and years. I live in London, worked in marketing, worked for big brands in the city. Well, I am 36 now, so <laughs> I've done all sorts of things since my psychology degree at uni quite a few years ago now. About two and a half years ago, I had a huge kind of shake up in my life. And I'm not sure maybe there might be a bit of a theme coming out of some of your interviews where there is really a moment in time where people are like okay (laughs) I need to kind of reassess what I'm doing with my life and you know where things are going am I living my life purpose you know why am I here on this planet all the kind of bigger questions I think we get stuck in in these jobs sometimes in these big corporate jobs and uh we kind of get trapped because we, we we feel like we're working up the ladder and you know that's what we should be doing and getting more responsibility and more money and whatever and especially in London it's it's very expensive to live here so we kind of get to a position where we're like oh well this isn't really what the plan was but this is what I'm doing now I'm working in marketing going into the city every day um, and I've got you know a nice amount of money that affords me to live in London but I'm you're sort of like okay I'm not am I enjoying this like where's the passion right you know all sorts of stuff so I think we can kind of do that for quite a long time until something comes and shakes us and I had um a really really terrible breakup say two and a half years ago that um after 10 years really kind of shook me to my core there's a period of a few months which I kind of look back on now and I just can't I don't even know how I was kind of managing to get up and go to work and all that kind of stuff and it's funny in corporate because you kind of get used to just being a bit of a corporate robot and kind of fitting into the mold that you're given and not really necessarily being yourself and being authentic and letting your emotions out Um, and that was a really difficult time because there was so much emotion and I had to just kind of remain professional and go into work and you know not let any of that out and I would come home and be in absolute floods of tears um it was that kind of moment where I was like right okay come on Laura like you need to really figure out what you want in life and what you're here to do I don't think you're here to work in this this corporate company it wasn't fulfilling my soul you know it wasn't really inspiring me I didn't really feel like I was inspiring any other people and then I started reading a lot of books, as you do, <laughs> kind of self-help books. It was, you know, things like the breakup books and all that kind of stuff. And I look back now and I'm like, oh, it's a bit cheesy. But you kind of just start just grabbing and latching onto anything that makes you feel slightly better or gives you a bit of a light, the light at the end of the tunnel. A lot of the books that I was reading really just started to help me. Things like The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, just really kind of waking me up really to being where like being in the now being in the present and not kind of worrying about the future and not thinking about the past and all that kind of stuff and really kind of owning where I was but yeah anyway so there was lots of kind of lots of inspiration that was around me I just saw it as a real opportunity to really start reflecting and thinking what do I really want to do so over kind of a year or so I started asking a lot of people you know what am I good at? (laughs) And thinking like, what can I do? Like, what do I enjoy? If you can really put passion at the heart of what you do, 
then you've absolutely nailed it in my opinion and that's that's what I tell a lot of my clients you know I tell all of my clients follow your heart always follow your heart that's some advice that I give to people friends family everyone that I kind of wish that I'd been given when I was younger and I was like okay well what is my passion <laughs> it's kind of it's hard to kind of just go all oh, right that's what I want to do and then go for it so it did take a bit of time but I I kind of came to the realisation that I love people. I am really, really inspired by people. And a lot of the conversations that I was having, people were saying that they were very inspired by me and I have a certain energy and a certain positivity and a certain optimism that when we have conversations, they really kind of go away and they feel like they can do anything in the world. I absolutely love that moment where you're talking to someone and you're not giving advice because that's not what a coach does, but you're just kind of helping someone figure out things for themselves and just empowering them to think a bit more bigger, a bit more clearly, and just come up with solutions. And you see the penny drop and there's a little glint in their eye. That moment for me, and I have it with my clients now, that moment is the moment that I'm just like, wow, I absolutely love doing that. And I love, I want that to be part of my job and my life and my life purpose. So yeah, a lot of people started saying, well, you should be a life coach or something like that. And I was like, okay, it doesn't actually seem that silly. So as much as I've been in marketing for years and years, I've got a psychology degree and I kind of looked into it. You know, there's some courses and all that kind of stuff that um, you need to do, which I've done. And again, just going back to the psychology, I absolutely love that. I've always loved um, psychology, the science of human behavior and all of that. I just kind of started figuring out how to do that and how to make that part of my journey. And then I started going in that direction. And I think you kind of know, obviously, quickly that you're going to need some kind of finance to go in. Like, I've, I've got a lot of faith in the universe and I was happy to kind of jump and take the leap and all that kind of stuff and, and know that the universe would be there to support me and catch me. But I believe in the law of attraction. And because I had this vision of setting up this company and I came up with the name The Secret Inspirer and I wanted to do it within the kind of next year or the next six months or so at this point. I um, manifested redundancy because I worked in telco and there was so many like acquisitions and mergers or whatever. It, it wasn't beyond the realms of possibility to kind of make myself redundant and I had to go and pitch to HR and I had to do all sorts of stuff but we, you know we came to an agreement and it basically gave me a year set up my company I think it's actually like a year to the day <laughs> bizarrely <Wow>. but yeah <laughs> I, uh, I didn't realize that that's what it was but yeah it was literally a year at the end of February I walked out of the the doors of the big company that I was working in uh, near St Paul's and it was snowing and you know half the people that were supposed to come to my leaving party couldn't come because it was snowing and I was just like, right, there you go. You've got a year. Just go and do it. So how did you feel so, taking those steps out of the corporate world with this project in mind, but nothing really set up at that point? It's a, it was a really beautiful feeling. It was a really nice feeling. And just to kind of walk out. And, and I've actually, as part, apart from the people, I've not actually missed the job um, or certainly not the environments of the kind of office environment and corporate politics and all that kind of stuff. But I was just really positive and really optimistic. I think it's one of those things you don't really, if you had to write down every single thing that you actually had to do and all of the stuff that I've done in the last year, you would be so overfaced by it and you would be like, I can't do this. This is, and it would just be filled with fear. But I was just filled with hope. And I was like, this is something that I have to do for myself. For me, you know, obviously some people have fabulous careers in corporate and that's, you know, that is their life purpose that fills them with joy every day, I'm sure. But for me, a lot of, I mean, one of the things that I do a lot with my clients is this thing called the wheel of life where you, you kind of detail all of the key things or my version of the wheel of life anyway. You, keep, you detail all the things that are really true to your heart and close to your heart. And for me, it's things like freedom and travel and kind of managing my own diary and love and wealth and, you know, all sorts of things, spirituality, all that kind of stuff. So this was just giving me an opportunity to just do it. And I was just like, okay, 
let's just go. I did have to have a few weeks just to kind of, I don't think you really realise until you walk out the door how highly strung and highly, how highly wound up you are from working in that environment that is so demanding um, and there's so much change and you've got so much to deal with on a daily basis. There's a lot of pressure, it, no matter what level you are, you're working at in the, those environments, there's a lot of pressure all the time. So I did take a few weeks just to kind of pause. And then I went to Bali, uh, <laughs> did some yoga, <laughs> which was good. Um, and I think it's really, really important, actually. That's, that's something that I tell my clients all the time, is just those moments where you pause and you really put yourself and your health first which you, I mean you should always do that every day but just those moments to reflect and I took a book with me the Buddha in me the Buddha in you by David Hare and I just was reading that while lying in the sunshine in Bali and doing yoga and just thinking wow this is incredible I've got such a brilliant journey in front of me and well done for just going and doing it and you know what's the worst that can happen the worst really at that point in time was that I was it wasn't going to work I was going to find that actually it wasn't my passion Maybe, maybe along the journey I'd find another passion. You know, I believe that everything's a stepping stone in the right direction of, you know, the, the path that you're supposed to be taking. And actually, worst, worst, worst case scenario, I'd just go, to, go back to corporate and do marketing again. But luckily it's not got to that point, but yeah. So I was feeling mixed emotions, but mostly optimistic and excited. So in terms of where you are today, you've, you've, you've spent about a year now uh, working mm -hmm. and building the secret Inspirer. Mm -hmm. What lessons have you learnt across that time to date? Patience. Be patient. <laughs> I mean, always check in, check back in with yourself as to, you know, the, why you're actually doing this, the purpose, and just keep reminding yourself. And, and just making sure that you're, you're still kind of you know doing that you know are you st are you still free are you still feeling all the things that you wanted to be feeling and, but yeah patience for me you, you know you you do all your plans you have all your milestones I mean things like you know getting your website together and your branding and all that kind of stuff it that all materializes and there's there's people that you can get to help you do some of that and I think that's really helpful because it it just does push things on and there's certain things that you need to produce and deliver and just get out there. And that's great. But there's certain things and certain opportunities that just don't come until the right time. So there's opportunities that are kind of coming to me in the Secret Inspire at the moment. Really interesting opportunities that a year ago, if I'd have had that opportunity, I, I wouldn't have been in the right position to service that um, business as effectively as I am now. So you just have to kind of be patient. Things always always take longer than you think they're gonna take <laughs> and you know, like I've had to rephase my forecasts and evolve my proposition and change things and be so flexible and so open in the last year and that's obviously I think that's another thing that's really key is what is the flexibility and kind of openness as well along the journey if you're too rigid to what your offering is then you know it might be quite difficult I think you do have to kind of go on the journey yourself and keep learning and evolving mm. but yeah I mean it's patience you've got to be patient <laughs> it takes time <laughs> Rome wasn't built in a day things don't have to be massively hard you know I think that that is a story that we tell ourselves like we have to be working hard in order to be successful and you know things have to be a real tour well, actually, they don't, and I don't believe that. And that things can be easy, and, and I do believe in an abundance um, of everything. And, you know, I believe that clients can come to me with ease and, and opportunities can come to me with ease. But, you know, things happen at the right time when they're supposed to happen. So just kind of hang on in there, remember why you're doing it, and be patient. Many entrepreneurs that I speak to, they either have a business that they're building as a side hustle, or they have... A couple of contracts that are lined up ready to go on the week or two after they've left their corporate roles mm. uh, and you took that leap of faith uh, quite early on and may not necessarily have the security of income coming in so how do you go about sourcing your leads I mean I didn't necessarily have X Y and Z lined up but I kind of the reason that I was doing what I was what I do is because I kind of knew that I would be good at it. 
and I am all about people and I love people and my network is huge and you know after years of working in corporate networking is just something I absolutely love doing and meeting people and finding out about them and the contacts that I've kind of built you always kind of look when you're like in your 20s or something you're like god how how does that person know you know the director of like blah blah at Google and that person over there and all of these like quite senior people in these big brands and actually it's just an evolution over time you kind of you get to 36 and <laughs> you just you just know all of those people because um you've had conversations and they're actually quite good like almost well they are a lot of them are friends and every, everyone kind of moves on don't they so the friends that you've got that you work with in one company you know, suddenly someone's moved over to Nike or someone's moved over to Twitter or whatever. And just suddenly you've got all of these fabulous friends in all these brilliant uh, companies all over the world. Or not, not so suddenly, which I think is the point. But yeah, so I kind of knew that I had a really good network and that there was a lot of encouragement from people that I was talking to about like, oh my God, but I need you. I need you as a life coach, like, and all, all of that kind of stuff. So there were quite a few contacts and quite a few conversations I could have very, very early on. Obviously, bearing in mind that I wanted to do everything legitimately and get qualified in certain things. Life coaching isn't actually a regulated industry as yet, but I always wanted to do everything legitimately and be as kind of experienced and you know as qualified as possible. But I think the real essence for me is my passion and love for people and wanting to help them which you can't really learn I guess but yeah just having that kind of network and framework there and talking to them and drawing on your network and using your network quite quickly I mean I guess they would I would I could call them like practice clients those conversations were kind of happening anyway while I was you know in my corporate job just organically and naturally um, which I guess is the reason why I ended up doing what I'm doing because I was kind of meant to be doing it. I was doing it anyway, but just not charging for it. <laughs> if so, that makes sense. Yeah, it does indeed. And in terms of the <laughs> framework within the Secret Inspirer, uh, do you lean on a particular process uh, of evaluation and then steps forward for each client, or is is it quite organic depending on the individual you're working with? Yeah, it is quite organic, really. It depends on what they're kind of coming to me to talk about. I mean, some things are quite personal based, some things are business orientated, but, you know, I believe that business and personal lives are exactly the same. Yeah, there is a structure I try and follow, um, just some basic coaching techniques and, and frameworks and things like that. I'm qualified as an NLP coach um, and practitioner. And so I'll draw on certain methodologies within neuro-linguistic programming while I'm having conversations. And there's certain things that I like to do at the beginning of meeting a client because the main crux of being a really good coach is actually trying to get into the mind and into the, the space of the person that you're helping and really understanding their internal world. So it's, you know, there's certain things that I will try and do in the first few sessions to, to really understand them and really, really understand what it is that they want and how I can then help them to get there. But yeah, it is quite organic. And, you know, some, some conversations will be in a restaurant <laughs> over, a, over a lunch and some will be in a park walking around, um, getting some air and just having a conversation. And then some will be a bit more structured. You know, I've got a session that I'm planning at the moment, like a planning day with a local business in South East London who just want a bit of help with their vision and strategy for their business and we're going to do like a planning day and goal setting and all that kind of stuff so it's all very different but I think you have to kind of feed off the energy of the conversation and you know what comes up in that time that you've got together work towards what it is that they want to achieve I mean I'm a Virgo so I'm quite organized <laughs> but you know I think it's, there's a lot of my personality and my energy in conversations and I think that's why the clients that I, I work with choose me particularly and um, I, quite, I really like to have fun um, in life in general and lighten things up because I don't think we're here for a very long time and you know I think we should really just be enjoying enjoying as many moments as we possibly can and make as many moments as magical as they can be. So I try and do things quite um, just, um, just informal, informally formal. 
<laughs> so here and now you, you you're year in uh, the whole point of entrepreneurial reality with bash is to follow the journey of 52 entrepreneurs across all walks of life many different industries so what is your ambition for the next 12 months so where i see the business going in the next kind of 12 months and going back to the earlier point about kind of evolving i have a vision something that i learned quite quickly my initial kind of audience was going to be consumers and i was going to spend a lot of time with individuals um individual one-to-one coaching and then you quite quickly realize and you know i put on lots of empowerment events and i have individuals coming to i've got like an event on saturday that's a boot camp and a goal setting session and then we're going to have some brunch all of that's lovely and you know i'm building lots of lovely communities that are kind of supporting each other to help them live their potential but you quite quickly realize that it's not necessarily sustainable financially so you have to evolve your proposition and my proposition has evolved into targeting businesses uh, on a retainer model so I'm currently speaking to quite a lot of brands within the entertainment and wellness industries. And I'm about to sign, uh, I think there's about three really good, quite meaty contracts with these businesses uh, on a retained model. Mm-hmm. So you have to kind of, like I say, you have to realize where you are and your vision needs to change sometimes. And that's kind of more of a lucrative route forward. You can burn out doing the wrong things and spending a lot of energy on things that don't actually have that much return and as much as you know the heart of the business I do want to help people and that will always be the case but you know you have to somehow make some money as well that's why we're entrepreneurs (laughs) so that's kind of evolving I mean it's going to be interesting to see where that goes so that I've got certain numbers of clients within that space that I would like to have in a year I also do wellness retreats um, and I've focused on individuals like up to now but actually that's going to change as well I'm going to focus on talking to brands about you know rewards and incentives and things like that and, and and doing building bespoke retreats for these brands so it might be like a record label just wants to take um 10 or 15 artists or something like that on to ibiza on a retreat <laughs> maybe ibiza is not a good idea but anyway um, very, <laughs> chill, very chill place as well i love ibiza there's lots of plans that i have for trying to establish a passive income stream as well, inspiring kind of more people en masse. Um, and obviously you have to take yourself as a person out of that, like physically, you yeah. can't always be there in every single one-to-one, can't always be in a one-to-one kind of situation. So I'm writing some content where I'll be delivering kind of eight weeks worth of inspirational content motivational stuff just to kind of give you know help people in certain aspects stuff that i do talk about with clients but it's all going to be sort of there in a nice email you know so one week it might focus on gratitude or something like that and the power of gratitude so then there'll be eight weeks of content that goes to um whoever's kind of just that offering and it's about kind of growing that and and making it automated if you can increase the numbers around that then that does make the business more scalable because it's not something that I need to be there for. In addition to that, would you be looking to write a book? I would absolutely love to write a book. Rather than kind of looking at finance, uh, you know, currently I like to think that I inspire maybe a hundred people or maybe, maybe more than that. But in a year's time, I'd quite like to have inspired 50,000 people. And then maybe five years time, you know, it might be millions of people. <laughs> That's kind of a nice way that I want to look at it. I just want, like you say, it's me. It is, it's me that's written that content. It's me that's kind of got that energy and that motivation and the inspiration and all that stuff that I really want to help other people have and all that kind of stuff and grow it. And then using this model, I'll be able to do that at the touch of a button to more people. And yeah, I mean, writing a book would be fabulous because... Um, the reach just kind of grows and grows and grows, doesn't it? It does indeed. And the world is becoming a smaller and smaller place as the internet gets used more prevalently across many countries. Exactly. I mean, anything's possible. I believe. I believe anything is possible. (laughs) And when you're on the right path, you know, it just feels right. So who knows what could happen? Yes. Who knows?
<laughs> but you have to do something about it for it to happen in the first place. Of course, yeah. That's what you're yeah. Doing. It's all about action. You have to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, if you don't have a dream, then you, you're never going to achieve it, are you? But yeah, you have to have a vision um, and then break it down into action and, and go in the right direction. Um, and, but then check in with yourself, check in with your heart and check in with your gut. And, you know, if it feels right and you're being kind of true to yourself, then it's going to feel right that you're in the right direction. But yeah, who knows? Who knows what opportunities are just around the corner? Laura, you mentioned a, a couple of books already. Uh, are there any other particular books that you could recommend the listeners to read that has been most impactful on your journey today? Well, the current book that I'm reading is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. But I'm about 10 pages in, you can see it, so I've just mentioned it. But that's, it's, yeah, just anything where you kind of, you, it's all about prioritisation, isn't it? And really understanding what you want and going for it. Um, and not uh, spending a lot of time worrying about all the peripheral stuff um but i actually also i'm a huge huge believer in and it's, it's kind of weird to say believer because it's this is nature and this is it's kind of facts like i really do think that we're very much impacted by um the cycles of the moon and i've read a book called moonology by yasmin boland you know i don't i think being an entrepreneur it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be you know up to our eyes in business orientated language and business orientated stuff like you know there is a there's a much much wider wider thing out there there's the planets that were that we live the planet that we live on or you know the, the sun and the moon the stars and everything the environment that we're in and i just kind of feel that that's such a bigger 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 thing and such a powerful thing to really connect with um, and just connecting with the cycles of nature and all that stuff and really understanding seasonality and everything and working with it. Uh, so moonology is very much about working, it's, it says on the front, working with the magic of lunar cycles. It's really understanding, you know, when the full moon's happening and when the new moon's happening. And, you know, it's a really interesting way of kind of breaking down when I should be planning stuff and manifesting and, you know, thinking of these big dreams and things like that. And when I should be really, really going for that, putting a lot of action underneath it and fire underneath what I'm doing. And then the moments where I should be kind of stepping back and just relaxing and retreating and receiving. And, and you know, that's, that's another thing that I, I think is quite a key thing in business is is knowing when to release um and knowing when to stop and kind of stop forcing things and stop pushing and just having a moment to kind of rest and just let nature and let you know everything just take its course and and just be ready to receive so that's it's actually quite a powerful book uh i would say yeah it's very linked to what i do and a lot of the stuff that i talk to my clients about Brilliant. I thought I was going to say Richard interview. Branson, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's, it, it's, it's quite interesting. I think he's also awesome. <laughs> no, I, and me, so I love him. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting point of view because there are broader views of balance, both the sort of the physical, the mental, spiritual elements of a human being mm. uh, that need to be addressed. And when you think of business, Mm. it's kind of the application of an idea selling your time or service or product to achieve money mm. but it doesn't really take into consideration not all the time the environment in which that business is situated in the impact it has on a social front yeah i'm very curious about the implications of business and the environment and the ebb and flow mm. uh, it's, it's certainly very interesting to me Exactly. And I think, I think we're at a really interesting time as well, because businesses do, they really have woken up to the, to the fact that, you know, the wellness of employees is such a huge thing and, and such a powerful thing. And also for people to really harness their authenticity and their uniqueness in business and being themselves in every situation and an understanding that, you know, we're not robots and we have times when we're more productive and we have times when we just need to retreat and we need to think and all that kind of stuff and a lot of these big um, business or corporate environments they aren't set up for that but I think there's much more of an understanding that actually 
hang on a minute, this is a, this is brilliant. Like we could, we could really be on fire. Like if our employees are really well looked after and we have this understanding that, you know, everyone's different, everyone brings something different to the table. And the more that we can just be us in every situation, yeah, be authentic and understand that there are times where there's bigger things at play. And, uh, you know, if it's a full moon, then <laughs> is that a good time to have a big team meeting? Is it not? I don't know. <laughs> It'd be quite interesting if businesses started looking at things like that. And I think they are. It'd be interesting to see what comes out of it over the next five years then of what businesses yeah. do do. And in terms of entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, the celebrities of the, the business and entrepreneurial world, are there any individuals or their actions that have inspired you uh, to, to go and take that leap of faith? I'm always a do it. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll just do it. I have kind of that faith in myself and in the universe. So that's kind of where I am. That's why I'm where I am today. I don't know who my inspiration's been over the years. I mean, yeah, I did mention Richard Branson earlier. He is he, he's a fantastic guy. I did actually work for Virgin Media at one point as well. And um, just the sense of, of him and his, you know, brand, Richard Branson, and him being a bit of a hippie and kind of, again, he's very much about kind of being yourself. And he's, he's done some incredible, incredible things. It does seem like that there's always a sense of him just being him. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that he does is about charity work and the environment and the world and people and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's the kind of thing that inspires me. Likewise, uh, part of my journey around the world, I read his book. Very interesting, the, the journey that he took, the, the sacrifices that his team and himself have made in the development of certain projects the work from a social standpoint it is very very impressive and uh, credit to him just out of interest i was working at the beginning of my career in a five-star hotel as a hall porter at the age of 16 and i realized that virgin booked out the entire hotel the five-star hotel in bournemouth and <laughs> i realized that there's this big vehicle that came in and then all these virgin alcoholic drinks came out and my boss told me ben you're taking the one of those to every room there was 250 <laughs> rooms at least that i had to take each no one of those two <laughs> yes but it what inspired me was the fact that it was a celebration of what virgin group was doing and they had all the the management team together to celebrate it was a bit like a an end of year knees up but Sir Richard Branson came and landed his helicopter in the back garden on his way to his room, beckoning me not to open the door for him. But it was my duty, it was my job to yeah. open and greet guests. So I, I insisted. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that has stayed with me till now. So yeah, there's a story shared yeah. with everyone. <laughs> I think celebrating successes is also a very important thing, isn't it? There's always so much striving. I think as an entrepreneur as well, you have to, it's, it's a lot of doing, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, we, we put it on ourselves um, and we're obviously doing this. We're, we are entrepreneurs because there's a fire in our belly and we want to achieve things and we want to break the mold and we want to do things differently. Um, we want to make some decisions, and but we have to stop and just have a party and celebrate how far we've come frequently along the journey. I think I think that's very important. Yeah, it is very important. You mentioned doing things and putting yourself under pressure to get things done, and that can take mm. a lot of time, a lot of effort. It can be quite yeah. stressful. So, how how do you go about delivering that balance to your life? How do you take yourself away from the, the stresses and strains of building and yeah. running a business well it is interesting because it it was one of the key things that I got into doing what I'm doing for was to kind of have you know that flexibility over my own diary and if I want to go running and uh, on lunch break or whatever then I can do and all that stuff and I think I started off really well with the best best of intentions and I had a bit of a plan with when I was going to yoga and I eat very well and you know lots of walking around not just sitting in front of my laptop all the time and then big things happen but you know I had a big launch event I had to plan for and you know my first retreats and things like that 
and suddenly it's you know midnight on a Friday night and you, you find that you're still sat on your laptop doing just one more thing one more thing one more thing one more thing and I, when it's your business I think one of the key things that I've found is as much as I, I do not have that Sunday night dread which a lot of people in corporate or I keep saying corporate any kind of any line of business or work have on a Sunday night or whatever your version of Sunday night is I don't have that kind of Sunday night feeling but I also I don't have the Friday night feeling so I don't get to kind of you know four or five on a Friday and go to the pub and I'm like yay you're always thinking about your business and there's a lack of switching off I don't kind of leave the office on a Friday and that's it um I don't think about it until I go back in on Monday it is constant so as much as I started off really well I did find myself kind kind of around October last year thinking gosh you know what I'm doing more hours I'm not necessarily stressed it's a very different version of stress because you're doing it for yourself and there's always that passion within you which you know it makes anything much much easier to do but I kind of found that my hours were going a bit you know too long and I wasn't maybe going to the yoga as much and all that kind of stuff but I just I just have to inspire the inspirer like that's what I do. I have to. Like one of my mentors from my my previous employment, he was like, Laura, so next time you go to a yoga class at, t- at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning or whatever, that is part of your work. You have to build that in to, you know, that is just as important as having a meeting and setting up, you know, a coaching client or planning a retreat or whatever, because you have to be at a certain level of, energy and vitality and all of that kind of stuff to help people inspire themselves like you are the inspirer you have to inspire the inspirer I just yeah I then just made it a point of now I have a bit of a schedule where on a Monday morning I will go to yoga um, at 9 45 and I really enjoy that start to the week it's very important Um, I make sure I, I absolutely love some kind of Ayurveda and the principles of eastern medicine and all that kind of stuff and I've been speaking to a fab- fabulous woman called Gita Vara just about that and I could talk in all sorts of detail about that but I won't bore you right now <laughs> but there's certain things that you should be doing certain routines and certain rituals every single day and you know the type of person I am I'm a Vata dosha so I should be having you know we should be having a big lunch and a small supper and all that kind of stuff so I've just put that into my day and I don't let it slip. And yes, there are moments when you're, you know, in the middle of Marlebone and you just need to grab some food or something like that. But I don't let it slip to the point where I am not well, you know, or it, my health is kind of suffering. That is the number one thing. You have to fill yourself up and you have to take time to just sit and reflect and recharge And you have to, you know, be doing some exercise or something like yoga or running or whatever. It's it's just so brilliant. And I find, you know, I was sat in a cafe yesterday. I was like, right, I need a break. When you stop, suddenly the phone keeps ringing and then there's more opportunities come in. And it's really, it's a really bizarre thing. The more you do to look after yourself um, and get away from that kind of sat there doing, 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 doing on my laptop. And, you know, I just need to do this one more thing. The more you stop and just look after yourself and fill yourself up, the more like incredible it becomes and the opportunities just seem to grow. So yeah, I've just had to kind of become strict with myself that that is part of the week that, you know, me looking after myself and going to yoga, etc., and walking out in the fresh air and sitting in the sun is as much part of my week as, you know, having my meetings and doing all that sort of stuff. What would you do differently? knowing what you know now I think I would have had more time off at the beginning (laughs) Um, (laughs) I know I've just said that I do look after myself but I haven't um, haven't had a holiday since August which for some that's not a long time for me I love 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 being in the sunshine that's when I really come alive Uh, so maybe I'd have been in Bali for longer and yeah, mate, things like travel, I don't know, I can, I've, I've got a business that is pretty portable. I can go anywhere in the world and do this business. And that's the plan. You know, hopefully next time when I speak to you in a year, um, I'll be sat on a beach in Bali or something um, with my laptop. <laughs> but I think, yeah, taking more breaks and trusting the journey. Yeah, going away and booking. I do a lot of retreats. I, I 
host retreats but I also go on them going to go on a, a surfing yoga holiday to Marrakesh for like the last three months which I just haven't booked in so I, I would do that I would actually I'd almost um, plan my year like I'm still working in corporate and give myself X amount of holidays because I think I think a lot of people who, who aren't self-employed probably think that we you know we sleep in every morning and <laughs> and have you know endless days just having long lunches and you know and going and seeing friends and having days off and holidays and stuff but that in the reality actually is probably you have less holiday days than um, you do when you're in that corporate environment but um yeah so I think maybe being a bit bit more structured with all of my time off because that is really when the magic happens when we do look after ourselves and give ourselves a break because we we don't we we literally spend so much time working and thinking about work and that's not really how we're supposed to be living um i don't think that's really why this beautiful planet exists it is actually to be having fun and doing the things that you're passionate about and and yeah all of those times to kind of get in the sun or you know that's something that i absolutely love doing just sitting and reflecting is so important um and i also think i would probably i would draw on my network even more I think there's a sense that, I don't know, you're, when you're finding your feet and you don't really understand the proposition, you kind of don't talk to people as much or, you know, you're, I'm not really sure about what this is and am I good enough and who am I to call myself a life coach and all that kind of stuff. But actually, you're doing it and, uh, you know, a lot of people have ideas and they actually don't do them. So the fact that you're doing it is incredible and you've got to believe um, but you can do it just just for that reason alone, and um, just yeah, use the contacts that you've got. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid to talk to people because you never know what is going to come out of it. Um, but yeah, and also to be patient, like I said at the beginning, <laughs> be patient and trust the journey. I, I think I was potentially in the first few months. You think that you're going to be at a certain point. And then you get a bit down on yourself because you're not, so you haven't achieved what, what you wanted to at that time. But actually, um, like I said at the beginning, um, everything's happening perfectly. Trust that it is and uh, enjoy the journey. Um, because, you know, there, there'll be a time when you're at, you seriously are rushed off your feet. When you actually, when you achieve a vision, you might get there and be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is crazy. So just enjoy, enjoy the journey as much as you can. For the listeners to get in contact with you, how, how can they find you? Well, I am at The Secret Inspirer on Instagram. I have a website, www.thesecretinspirer.com. My email is laura at thesecretinspirer.com. So uh, feel free to get in touch. Brilliant. And thank you very much for your time, Laura. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. And thank you very much, Ben. It's been lovely. Great. And look forward <laughs> to speaking again in a year's time to see how, how you progress. Yeah, hopefully in Bali. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'll invite you out to my, well, my villa in Ibiza or my Bali, Bali retreat or something. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. So what do you think? We'll have another interesting story to dive into next week. Looking forward to it already. Some questions to you in the meantime. What is your story? What is your reality right now? And what are you working towards? Let me know. So you can connect with me on Twitter. Just type in Bash in the search and you'll find me. So Bash, B-A-S-H. Easy. On Instagram, it's Bash Reality. So that's Bash underscore reality. And on LinkedIn, Benjamin Ashmore. Make sure you subscribe. And until next week, cheers. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.